I'm here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona with Al Velasco, who's the Senior VP of Communication Services at Radisys. Now, leading up to Mobile World Congress, Radisys announced the Engage platform. Can you tell me more about what that is and what kind of inspired it? Engage Digital Platform is a, is a, a product that allows application developers and service providers to expose capabilities in their networks that make the, the features, um, services, uh, and even the, the infrastructure and scale of their networks accessible to mobile application developers, web application developers for new digital services for consumers and businesses. The inspiration for this product was um, we have a we have for the past 15 years have been providing service providers around the world. Uh, we have about 200 mobile operators have deployed our media server or media resource function in their network to provide uh, support applications like conferencing, um, uh, ringback tones, uh, uh, network announcements, and our customers continuously ask us, how can I leverage these capabilities and unlock new applications and services? And with the advent of, uh, of uh, capabilities that 5G enables, um, uh, Internet of Things, more connected devices, uh, more bandwidth, so those connected devices can support video, uh, audio, um, and the, the, um, the, the platform allows de developers to leverage those in applications like smart cities, security and surveillance applications, entertainment applications, customer support and e-commerce. And by making, by making those features of their network available to developers who don't necessarily have to understand the details of the infrastructure and have that level of expertise, they can bring new applications to market more quickly, they can adapt applications, um, um, the applications, uh, um, you know, with the pandemic, uh, the, 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 things are constantly changing. Rules are constantly yeah. changing. Who can work when and where? So not only does this platform allow cut developers to build these applications and deploy them quickly, but easily adapt them to changing um, uh, to changing conditions. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, easily adapt and change. I know that something. Uh, important for Radisys was the ease of use for uh, the, you know, for its customers. So can you explain or talk a little bit about um, what you mean by it's easy to use? Sure, <laughs> sure. There's a couple of dimensions to that. Yeah. One is, the, uh, you can look at what we provide as kind of functional building blocks that, that the, the developers can use to assemble into different applications. And what we've done to try to make it very easy to do that is uh, provide visual tools so that even somebody who is not a developer, they might be a business process owner, um, they can use these tools to create a workflow, um, test that workflow, and then deploy it in the in the network. We are also providing we are also providing our own applications. Uh, we are getting demand from customers to provide more uh, turnkey applications that can be customized by their users. So we're creating a library of those applications as well. So essentially, there are things that we can do off the shelf to enable the applications to be deployed. But we don't we don't lose sight of the need for some customers to have the ability to do very sophisticated capabilities. So we provide. Uh, SDKs um, and programming tools for uh, more advanced developers as well. Great. And now, Al, what else uh, is Radisys, you know, bringing to the table at Mobile World Congress? Yeah. So, uh, in fact, some of the applications that we've built using this platform um, are, are being demonstrated. We have a product called the Engage Video Assistant, which essentially allows um, uh, businesses to personalize more interactions with customers in an automated way. Again, back to the pandemic, the load on, on contact centers for customer support or e-commerce or e uh, is huge. I mean, you, you, you can go to sites today still, even though there's, you know, people have adapted to the pandemic and uh, deployed more technologies, you can still wait quite a long time even to interact with a text, a text bot, right? Absolutely. So the ability to automate more interactions uh, with a medium like video is pretty powerful. And we see, have customers who are using this for um, uh, um, selling or uh, how-to or troubleshooting where once you do get engaged to a, a chat bot or even a, a, a voice interaction, an automated voice interaction, there's a certain point where not having a visual medium means you have to more quickly move to, a, to an agent. If you have the ability to still use you know, conversational natural language to interact with the company 
but using um, a video bot, which essentially would be could be it could be an avatar, it could be it could be a, a personality from a company. In fact, we're demonstrating uh, what we call the Arun bot. Arun Bikshesvaran is our CEO, so we have a bot that introduces um, people who are coming to the booth. Um, through this, uh, through the interface, uh, we recognize we can recognize who the person is. They do a face scan, inter and the interaction is personalized. Everyone will say, yeah, uh, "Welcome, Al. Um, can you, would you like to hear about this product, this product, this product?" I can ask, and then he will point me where to go in the show. Nice. So, <laughs> that's very cool. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me here. Sure, thank you.